In this video, we're going to go over the Thin's Lens Equations. We're going to use it to solve certain problems, and we're going to draw a few ray diagrams. So there's two lens that you need to be familiar with. This is called the convex lens, also known as the convergent lens. And notice that it's thicker at the center. The next one is the concave lens. This is also known as the divergent lens, which is thinner at the center. Something important that you need to keep in mind is the focal length. For a convergent lens, the focal length is positive. And for a divergent lens, the focal length is negative. So let's draw a convex lens. The horizontal line is known as the principal axis. The focal length is the distance between the point F and the center of the lens. So that's the focal length. It's also the same distance on the other side, so it appears on both sides. The focal length is half of the radius of curvature. Let's say this is the object. DO is the distance between the object and the center of the lens. So that's the object distance. HO is the height of the object. The image could be on the right side or the left side. Typically the object is on the left side and usually the object is usually positive because it's a real object. If you have a two lens system sometimes the object can be negative which is a virtual object which we'll cover that later in the video. DI is a distance between the center of the lens and the image. HI is the height of the image. So in most typical problems, if you have a one lens system, always assume that DO is positive. DI is positive on the right side. And whenever DI is positive, you have a real image. A real image occurs whenever light rays converge at a point. If it converges, then you have a real image. If the image forms on the left side, DI will be negative and it's a virtual image. A virtual image occurs because the light rays, they appear to converge at that point, but they don't actually converge there. So that's a virtual image when the light rays appear to converge at a point. Whenever the object is facing any upward direction, HO is positive. Now notice here the image is facing in a downward direction, so HI is negative. If the image were to be facing upward, HI would be positive. When the image is in a downward direction or when it's opposite to the object, the image is inverted. So whenever HI is negative or if the magnification is negative, the image will be inverted. Typically the object is always going to be facing the upward direction. That's the usual uh, situation. Now in this case, when the image is facing the upward direction, it's set to be upright or erect. Now sometimes the image might be taller than the object. Then in that case, the image is enlarged. If it's smaller than the object, then it's set to be reduced. The equations that you need to know is this one. This is the thin lens equation. 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. You also need to know that magnification is the ratio between the height image and the height of the object. It also equals negative DI over DO. 
So make sure you know these two equations because this is all we need to solve um, most problems relating to the, uh, the thin lens equation. So let's say if we have a convergent lens with a focal length of six centimeters and let's say that we place an object eight centimeters away from the lens on the left side. Where is the image located? And let's say that the height of the object is two centimeters tall. So where is the image located? How tall is the image? What's the magnification? And also, let's draw a ray diagram. Now, since we have a convergent lens or a convex lens, the focal length is positive. So let's use the equation. 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di. So 1 over 6 is equal to 1 over 8 plus 1 over di. So to solve for di, let's multiply both sides by the common denominator, which is 48 di. But I'm going to write it as 6 times 8 times di. So we need to distribute 48 di to every term we see in this equation. So if we multiply it by 1 over 6, notice that the 6s will cancel. So it would simply be 8 times di on the left side. Now if we multiply 1 over 8 by 6 times 8 times di, this time we can cancel 8. And so what we have left over is simply 6 di. And if we multiply these two, we could see that uh, di will cancel. And so what we have left over is 6 times 8, which is 48. So whenever you have an equation that contains a lot of fractions, Multiply both sides by the common denominator, and you can eliminate all fractions, making it a lot easier to solve. So now let's subtract both sides by 6di. So 8 minus 6 is 2, so 2di is equal to 48. So now we need to divide both sides by 2. So half of 48 is 24. So therefore, the image is located 24 centimeters from the lens. Now, do we have a real image or do we have a virtual image? What would you say? Notice that di is positive. Because it's positive, we have a real image. Now, this image, is it going to be on the right side or on the left side? If di is positive, the image it's going to form on the right side. It's going to be on the right of the lens. If it was negative, we would have a virtual image that would be on the left side. But since it's positive, it's a real image on the right side. So now let's solve for the magnification. The magnification is equal to negative di over do. It's also equal to hi over ho, but we're not going to use that part of the equation at this point. Now, di is 24, do is 8, so the magnification is negative 3. So if the magnification is a negative number, is the image inverted or erect? Because it's negative, the image is inverted. So the fact that it's inverted means that if the object is facing the upper direction, the image is going to be facing down. Now, is the image enlarged or is it reduced? Is it taller or shorter than the object? Notice that the magnification is negative 3. So if you ignore the negative sign, it's going to be 3 times taller than the object. So the object is 2 centimeters. The image is going to have a height of negative 6 centimeters. It's going to be 3 times tall. The fact that it's negative means that it's facing in a downward direction. If it's positive, it's going up. But if the image of the height, if it's negative, that means it's going down. It's inverted. 
So you can use the equation m is equal to hi over ho. m is negative 3. We're looking for hi, and ho is 2. So if you cross multiply, you'll see that hi is equal to negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. So at this point, what we're going to do now, we're going to draw a ray diagram. Let's place the focal length, or the focal point, right here. And let's put it on the other side, but we got to make sure that it's equally distant to the center. So my graph won't be perfect, but let's say it's at that point on the right side. So the focal length is 6, but the object it has a distance of 8, so it should be to the left of the focal point. So let's put it somewhere over, let's make it about this tall, somewhere over here. So the first ray that we need to draw is going to be parallel to the principal axis, starting from the object. Once we reach the midpoint of the lens, we're going to draw a line from that point to the focal point on the right side. Let me see if I can draw a better line. Now the second line that we're going to draw is going to pass through the focal point on the left from the object. Let's draw a straight line. And then once it touches the, the midpoint of the lens, it's going to have to turn this way. And then the second ray that you can draw passes from the object through the center of the lens. And as you can see, they intersect somewhere in this region. And so this is where the image forms. So now let's analyze the diagram that we currently have. So the distance of the object is 8 centimeters. And the distance of the image, we could see that it's 24. It's three times as far compared to the object from the lens. Now the height of the object is about two centimeters. And the height of the image, we can see that it's larger. It's six centimeters. So we have an enlarged image. Now notice that the image is upside down. The object is facing in the upward direction but the image is facing in a downward direction, so the height is negative 6, as opposed to uh, being a positive number. And the magnification is negative, which means that it's inverted. We can see that. And you can see it's, it's a real image. The reason why it's a real image, the light rays, they converge at this point. So whenever you place an object to the left of the focal point. If it's beyond the focal point, you're going to get a real, inverted, enlarged image. But now what happens if we take this object and if we move it between the focal point and the lens? What type of image will be formed? Is it going to be real or virtual? Is it enlarged or reduced? Is it upright or inverted? Let's find out. Let's keep the focal length 6 centimeters. And since we're still dealing with a convex lens, it's going to be positive 6. But let's change the distance of the object to 4 centimeters. So it's between the lens and the focal point. And the height of the object will still be 2 centimeters. So feel free to try this problem. Pause the video and see if you can get the answer. Find where the image is located. That's DI. Also, calculate the magnification and determine the height of the image, hi. And then draw the ray diagram. And then decide if you have a real or virtual image 
and if it's upright or inverted, and if it's enlarged or reduced. So let's begin. Let's use the equation 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di. So the focal length is 6. The distance of the object from the lens is 4. And so let's solve for di. So what should we multiply both sides by? We have a 6, a 4, and a di. 6 times 4 is 24, so we can do that. But 6 and 4 go into 12. So it might be easier if we multiply both sides by 12 di. So 12 di times 1 over 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So on the left, we have 2 di. 1 fourth times 12 di. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we have 3 di. And 1 over di times 12 di. Di will cancel. And so all we have left over is a 12. So let's subtract both sides by 3 di. So negative di is equal to 12. If we multiply both sides by negative 1, we can see that di is negative 12. So if di is negative 12, what type of image do we have? Is it a real or a virtual image? Because di is negative, what we have is a virtual image. Now, if it's virtual, and if di is negative, is it going to form on the left side or on the right side of the lens? Because di is negative, it should form on the left side of the lens. If di was positive, it would form on the right side of the lens. And it would be a real image. But we don't have that. So now let's calculate the magnification, which is negative di divided by do. So that's negative, negative 12 divided by 4, which is two negatives will turn into a positive. So positive 12 over 4, the magnification is positive 3. So because the magnification is greater than 1, do we have an upright, I mean, an enlarged or a reduced image? If the absolute value of the magnification is greater than 1, you have an enlarged image. It's going to be bigger than the object. Because the magnification is 3, that means that the height of the object is 3 times bigger than, I mean, the height of the image is 3 times bigger than the height of the object. So the height of the image should be 6. If you use the equation, 3 is equal to hi over 2 if you cross multiply. This is 1 times hi, which is hi, and 3 times 2, which is 6. So the height of the image is positive 6. So since the height of the image is positive, is the image going to be facing the upward direction or the downward direction? Because the height is positive, it's going to be upward. And because the magnification is positive, it's going to be uh, upright or erect. It's going to be in the same direction as the object. So if the object is facing in the upper direction, then the image will be facing the upper direction. So we have an upright or an erect image. So now let's draw the ray diagram. So first let's put the principal axis and then let's draw our convex lens. And let's place the focal point here and here. Let's make sure they're equally distant. So since the focal length is 6 and DO is 4, DO is between the lens and the focal point. So let's put it, let's say about here. So we're going to draw the first ray from the object to the center of the lens, parallel to the principal axis. And then it's going to 
pass through the focal point. Let me try that again. I don't think that was a straight line. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Now we're going to draw another ray between the object and the center of the lens. So notice that the rays are divergent on the right side. They're spreading apart, so they don't converge. So what we're going to do is draw this backwards. Notice that if you draw it backwards, the rays appear to converge at this location. Because the rays appear to converge, we have a virtual image. It's not a real image because the rays do not actually converge there. And notice that we have an enlarged image. The arrow, the blue arrow, is much bigger than the white arrow. The height of the object was 2, but the height of the image is positive 6. Because it's positive, it's facing the upward direction, so we have a magnified image. Now the distance of the object is 4 centimeters, but notice that the distance of the image is 12. It's further away from the lens, and it's on the left side, which we predicted, because it has a negative sign. And it's virtual because the rays do not converge there, so we have a dashed line instead of a solid line. Since the image is in the same direction as the object, and it's going up, it's upright or erect, as we can see based on the drawing. So whenever you place an object between the focal point and the lens, you're going to get a virtual image that's enlarged and that's erect or upright. Anytime you place an object between the focal point and the lens. If you place it at the focal point, if you use the equation, 1 over f and 1 over dl will cancel because they're the same, and di will be infinity. So if you place it on the focal point, the image will form at infinity. It's going to be very, very far away from the lens. Just in case you wanted to know that. But now let's move on um, to the divergent lens. Let's do a few problems associated with that. So let's say that the focal length is 4 centimeters and DO is 12 and we're going to use a height of 2 again for a divergent lens. Now is the focal length positive or negative for a divergent lens? It's going to be negative so we have to plug in negative 4. So go ahead and try this problem see if you can get the answer and then unpause the video when you're ready to see the solution. So let's use the same equation. 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. So f is negative 4, do is 12, and di is going to be the same. So what should we multiply both sides by to eliminate all fractions? What is the common denominator. The lowest common denominator is 12 di. So negative 1 fourth times 12 di. 12 divided by negative 4, that's going to be negative 3. And 1 12 times 12 di is simply di because the 12s cancel. And for this one, di cancels, so you're just going to get 12. Now let's subtract both sides by di. So negative 3 di minus di is negative 4 di. So if we divide both sides by negative 4, di is equal to negative 3. Since di is negative 3, is the image real or virtual? So what we have, because di is negative, the image is virtual. And is it going to form on the left side or the right side? Anytime you have a virtual image, it's going to form on the left side. 
whenever you're dealing with a lens. Whenever di is negative, it's going to be on the left. So now let's calculate the magnification, which is negative di over do. So that's negative negative 3 divided by 12. So this is 1 fourth. So if the magnification is 1 fourth, what's the height of the image? What's 1 fourth of 2? 1 fourth of 2 is a half. So the height of the image is basically 0.5 centimeters. Keep in mind, you can use the equation m is equal to hi over ho. So m is 1 fourth. hi, we're looking for it. ho is 2. So if you cross multiply, 2 is equal to 4 hi. And if you divide both sides by 4, hi is 2 over 4, which is 1 half, and that's the same as 0.5. So because the magnification is less than 1, we have a reduced image, an image that's shorter than the object. But the magnification is still positive, which means that the image is erect or upright. So if the object is up, the image will be up as well, because hi is positive but it's reduced. So now let's draw a picture. So this time let's draw a divergent lens. Let's place the focal point at this position. So the focal point is 4 centimeters, but the object is 12 centimeters. So it should be somewhere over here. So let's draw the first ray, which is going to be parallel to the principal axis. It's going to go from the object to the center of the lens. And then it's going to... It's going to diverge instead of, it's not going to go towards this focal point. Rather, it's going to follow this line, but it's going to go this way. Now, the next ray that we need to draw, we need to draw a line between the object and the center of the lens. Well, that wasn't a straight line. Let me try that again. Okay, I'm just going to go with that. But you can see the image is somewhere in this vicinity. So you can see that the image is reduced. It should be about one-fourth of the height of the object. And because the image is on the left side, di is negative. And it's a virtual image. It appears as if the light rays converge here. Notice that we have a, a dotted line going this way. So because it forms on the left side, it's a virtual image. And it's upright because HI and M are both positive. It turns out that whenever you use a diverging lens, the image is always going to be on the left side. For a diverging lens, it doesn't matter if the object is placed to the left of the focal point, on the focal point, or between the focal point and the lens you will always get a virtual image for a divergent lens. The virtual image will be upright and it's going to be reduced. It's going to be smaller than the object. So let's prove it with another example. So we're going to choose a focal length of 6, but it's negative 6 for a divergent lens. DO will be positive 3 centimeters and HO, we're going to keep it 2. So let's solve for DI and HI. So 1 over F is equal to 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. So 1 over negative 6 is 1 over 3 plus 1 over DI. Now let's multiply both sides by 6DI. 
So negative 1 6 times 6 di, the 6 will cancel, so it's simply negative di. 1 3rd times 6 di, 3 divided by, I mean 6 divided by 3 is 2, so it's going to be 2 di. And for this one, di will cancel, so all we have left over is a 6. So let's subtract both sides by 2 di. So negative 3 di is equal to 6. And if we divide by negative 3, di is equal to negative 2. So the fact that it's negative means that we still have a virtual image. So if we calculate the magnification, it's negative di over do. So negative negative 2 divided by 3. So the magnification is positive 2 thirds, which is less than 1 which means that it's still a reduced image, but the fact that it's positive means that it's still upright. So now let's calculate HI. So 2 over 3 is equal to HI divided by HO. So if we cross multiply, 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times HI, that's just 3HI. So if we divide by 3, we can see that HI is 4 thirds. 4 thirds is about 1.33. So it's still less than 2. So it's a reduced image. So now at this point, let's go ahead and draw the picture. So let's place the focal point at that location. So the focal length is 6, but DL is 3. So DL is right in the middle between the focal point and the lens. So let's put it here. So we're going to draw the first ray, and then draw a dashed line between the focal point and the center of the lens where the ray intersects it. And then the light will actually bend this way. Now the second ray that we need to draw is going to go straight through the lens. It's going to pass right through the center of the lens. And where these two lines intersect, or where they appear to intersect, that's going to be where the image is. So as you can see, DO is 3 but di is less than 3. In this case, it's 2. And the fact that it's negative 2, it's still on the left, it's virtual, and it's upright because it's in the same direction as the object, it's facing the upward direction, but it's reduced, it's smaller. So for a divergent lens, you're always going to get a virtual image that's reduced, but that's upright or erect. Now, let's see what's going to happen if we place the object on the focal point. So let's draw it here. So if we draw the first ray and then connect these two and then draw a second line here. My lines are terrible. But still you can see that the we're gonna get a virtual image between the focal point and the um, and the divergent lens. And you can see that it's reduced, it's upright. So no matter where you put the object for a divergent lens, you will always get a virtual image that's reduced, that's upright or erect. It's always going to work out that way. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be beneficial. Thanks for watching and have a great day.